this is going to be a long one. Just getting all this stuff around. I hope you're in for a ride. This might be a two beer podcast. Drink of the evening is Pedal to the Kettle. And it is brewed by Upland Brewing Company right here in Bloomington, Indiana, Midwest United States. It is... I'm such a dork, I know. It's ale with rose, hibiscus, and strawberry. Tart at full speed. Now, I like a good tart beer. I've never had this. It could go either way. Not bad, drinkable. I don't really taste. It doesn't taste fruity at all. It's tart. Eh. I like it. Hey guys, Chevy Rell here. Uh, if you don't know who I am, you know the drill. There's a little eye up there. Well, actually, if you don't know who I am, you wouldn't know the drill. I say it every episode. There's a little eye up there where I did an introduction video. If you are new to the channel, feel free to check that out. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you have grabbed a beverage. A beverage. And you're knitting and I hope you're ready for this. There's a lot. I think that this is going to be my longest episode. I don't know. I could be wrong. I feel like it's definitely the most stuff I've ever had to talk about. So let's get into the stuff. The FO train. Actually, before I do FOs, I do want to mention, I'm so glad that the Instagram beginners video tutorial thing, whatever that thing is, <laughs> that I attempted to do. Well, I didn't attempt it. I did do it. I, thank you so much for the feedback that that helped some of you. Even if it helped one or two of you, I'm, I'm good with that. I hope that you can enter the rabbit hole of wonderfulness with us. Because if you like to be enabled, Instagram is where it's at, for sure. I have F O's. F to the M and F and O's. I got lots of them. Let me just uh, start by saying this. Tommy, uh, the dyer behind Moonstone Dye Works, as well as the podcast host of Squirrel Pie Production, for those of you who are new viewers, is having her first baby. Tommy is awesome. She had mentioned in a past episode of hers that she wanted some bluebirds of happiness. She wanted to make like a whole bunch of them. I had the idea of putting a call out to fellow knitters that were feeling uh, generous and wanting to help welcome Tommy's little one into the world with bluebirds of happiness, that they were welcome if they so choose if they so chose to send me the bluebirds of happiness which that is a pattern dang it a pattern by somebody that i'll put down here somewhere because i forget i'm sorry the bluebird of happiness is a free pattern in that package i made a little something not a bluebird. So Tommy, if you're watching and you want to be surprised, look away. You don't have to pause it or anything. I will tell you when it's not on the screen. I'm not going to tell you what the pattern is. I'm not going to tell you what the yarn is. All I'm going to do is show the other viewers. So uh, if you want to be surprised, look away now. I mean, isn't it cute? Okay, Tommy, you can look back. So that's an FO. Uh, another FO, I have mentioned before that I am not typically someone who jumps on a bandwagon, but every once in a while there is a pattern that strikes my fancy and I do. Uh, over Memorial Day weekend, I knitted the Harlow hat. I'm sure that all of you have seen, oh, and I have a, I have an end that I haven't woven in. Typical. Typical. <laughs> um, I made the Harlow hat by Andrea Mowry. It is brioche. Uh, for those of you who don't know, she had a knit along Memorial Day weekend. The cool thing about brioche is it looks completely different on both sides. 
I'm gonna try and be better at this, you guys. I ran into Lisa, hi Lisa, if you're watching, who is an avid podcast watcher at the Plucky Pop-Up, and we were chatting about, you know, likes and dislikes of podcasters, and I am terrible at some of the things that annoy her. <laughs> um, that would be mispronouncing designers' names, not knowing my yarn, things like that. So I'm gonna try and be better, I promise. I'm not gonna be great, I just know me and I am a hot mess, I'm gonna say 80% of the time, maybe. But I will do my best. So, this was made with scraps. On the inside, this section is a Zauber ball of something, I don't know. I know I bought it at Simply Socks Yarn Company, I have no idea the colorway name. The purple is Yarn Cafe Creations. Again, no idea. For some reason, I want to say like Arizona, but I don't know why I think that. This is deep stash old school. Like I knit this, I want to say, well, it's my pavement sweater, which I've talked about in a past episode. And actually, I think I might've looked the color way up then. Maybe that's why I think it's Arizona. Her yarn base, whatever this is, it is so soft and squishy and my pavement sweater is seriously one of my favorite sweaters. So then this color down here is, uh, again, I don't know the colorway, but I do know that it's Hedgehog. And that was a skein that Dan bought me as a birthday gift one year, again from Simply Socks. The black or the outside color is I don't think that the colorway had a name, but that yarn is pretty special to me. It is by Cyborg Craft Room. Some of you who have been in the knitting world for a while know that she actually passed away. I don't know any of the particulars, but she's young, like she's younger than me, uh, or was younger than me. But I always saw her at YarnCon, and this yarn was a YarnCon special colorway. Like she only dyed it for YarnCon uh, 2015. And then I believe that I saw her 2016 and was wearing the sweater that I knit in this colorway. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I have actually lost quite a bit of weight, like a lot of weight since I knit that sweater and it's ginormous. I still wear it. I don't care. There are other sweaters that I've thought about frogging just because they don't fit. There are sweaters that I have frogged because they don't fit, but I will never frog that sweater. It's she was always so, so nice to me. She was super excited. She was kind of a dork like I am, like cyborg craft room. You know, she liked that kind of stuff. Uh, I think one year Dan was wearing like a Nintendo t-shirt and she commented on it. So um, now it also gets to be in my Harlow hat. And again, that is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. All of that is fingering weight as well. Next finished object. Mama Kathy, if for some reason you're watching, for those of you who don't know, Mama Kathy is my best friend in the whole wide world, Clint, who I'm hoping someday will make an appearance. Mama Kathy is his mom, and I made her Mother's Day present. So if for some reason you're watching, look away. I hope the color comes up okay. These are the counterbalance mitts. The last time you saw this, the ends weren't woven in. That was with Mama Jean. Oh my gosh, I digress. I never even mentioned that. You guys are in love with her. I got so many comments on Mama Jean. You want Mama Jean to have her own show. That was so much fun and I am so glad that you guys love her as much as I do. Uh, she is good, good peeps, and we have a lot of fun together. I do have to tell you a funny story. I get a text from her that says, my, my dad had like some heart stuff a couple years ago, so now he has to go to the doctor like quite a bit for checkup. So they like know their nurses and they know their doctors. And I get a text that says, 
dad told the nurse today that I that I got that I was on my first iPod. And I was like, you have an iPod? And she was like, he met podcast. And I was like, oh, because I was confused. And she said, yeah, so was the nurse. I had to explain it. it. That's so funny. I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed that episode. And if the time ever arises again that I'm there for a long weekend and recording happens, I'll for sure have Mama Jean back on again. Anyway, back to these myths. I showed these on... Uh, that episode and the one didn't have the ends woven in and I had this far on the cuff. This stitch marker is actually one that I just made myself. I don't know if you remember I got a bunch of these light bulb stitch markers from Kelly who was my fiber share partner. That's Kelly Marie Yarns. Go check her out. She also has a yarn with the Chevy Ray. Chevy Ray that is the Chevy Rel colorway. So her yarn is awesome. Go, go look her up. But I used one of her stitch markers and this is actually an owl. Y'all know I love owls. That fell off a bracelet. So I just made my own. But it had wee cuff and I got them both done. I will be giving those to Clinty so that he can give those to his mama for Mother's Day, even though they're a little late. Next up. As you guys can see from the thumbnail, this is an oldie but goodie FO. These are, oops, my Wanderer Modern Mucklucks, also by Andrea Mowry. I had this one done. They are knit top down. This is where I was the last time you saw them. So I got the rest of this done. They blocked out great. This yarn is Harrisville Design. Let me just look, cause you guys know I mess that up every time. Yes, Harrisville Designs. This is on their Highland base, which is worsted. You guys, so, so great. It's sheepy, but I love Sheepy. It's 100% virgin wool. The skeins come, uh, it's 200 yards a skein, and it's only like $12 and some change for a worsted weight. I will knit a sweater out of this one day. These colors are in grass and charcoal. Again, I have to thank Tommy from Squirrel Pie. She's the one that, I forget what she knit with hers. Tommy, you'll have to tell us because I don't remember. But she's the one who kind of pointed me in the direction of Harrisville Designs, and I am not disappointed. It is awesome, and I love it. This pattern, in my opinion, of course, I am, you know, who am I besides a train wreck most days? <laughs> I think, personally, that this would be a perfect starter color work pattern. And maybe I've said this before. Now I can't remember if I've said it on here or not. In color work, you have to catch your floats if the run is over five stitches. Well, some say four. I usually catch it at five. I'll like knit three stitches, catch it, knit two. Of course, this is one of these. I forget. I think it's like in here is the chart. Like that's one chart. There's only two rows that you have to catch floats. So it's great because when you're trying to do yarn management, which is kind of the fiddly part of color work, it, it's good because you can get into the flow without having to catch a bunch of floats. So then you can kind of get a rhythm going and get a little more comfortable with the color management. And when I say color management, for those of you who haven't knit colorway, I personally, when I do colorway, I hold them because I'm an English, I'm a thrower, I'm not a continental knitter. A lot of people who knit color work will hold one color continental and one color English. I can't do that. I hold one color on my index and one color on my middle and I, I do this as I'm going. I should take a video. 
I, actually, I thought about that while I was knitting these because I wonder if anybody else does color work the way I do. Because, you know, I'm a little off sometimes. I think that if you are starting color work, it would be a pretty cool pattern to start off on. The other reason that I think it would be a cool pattern to start on is because it's worsted weight. So it will go quicker, obviously. And because there aren't a bunch of floats to catch, you don't get that pucker. Uh, a lot of times with color work, you'll hear podcasters talk about their work puckering and hoping that it'll block out and things. And that's because the longer your floats are, the different uh, tension you might have, and it could cause it looks like little ripple when I say pucker, it looks like little ripples in your in your knitting. Whereas these are pretty much just every other, so I didn't get any of that problem. So I don't know, that's just my two cents. And come back next week for a couple more cents. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh, I'm in rare form today, guys. Actually, I don't know if I'm in rare form. Am I usually like this? I don't know. I just get so excited talking about fiber. Okay. This next FO might perhaps be one of the cutest things I've ever made. And every time I look at it, I think I'm going to think of knit style which Sharon and Rich, the Knit Style Podcast, I know I've mentioned them before. She was the dyer of all of my Oracle yarn. I bought a kit. They're really cool. I love her colorways and they're super fun to watch. But I made this while I was watching an episode of theirs. You guys. Isn't it cute? I love pigs so much. <laughs> it has four little pizzies. Okay, now, I was so excited, I forgot his tail. I haven't really decided what I wanna do for his tail. Cause obviously he needs like a little corkscrewy tail. So I haven't decided, but oh my gosh, look how flipping cute he is. I love him. Now, I've said before, Dan love, love, loves his little collectibles that I make him on his desk. They are the only thing that sits on his desk. For all of you new viewers, Dan is my man. Uh, I would say common law marriage. We've been together for like 12 years. I don't know if Indiana has common law or not. Eh, you know. He's an engineer. He is very, um, engineery <laughs> and the only thing on his desk is little things that I've made him and he asked if he could have him now where this came from I don't know if y'all remember but oink pigments had a little kit uh, last gosh you guys when was that I do not remember when this was but I purchased this at Mass Ave Knits in Indianapolis while I was on the yarn crawl down there, which I did an entire video on. And I'm just now making it. It's been a while ago. Like she had all of the fiber um, in the little baggie. Anybody who has not needle felted before, it is time consuming, fairly easy. I think I only stabbed myself twice while I was doing that. I only drew blood once which I do every single time I needle felt, no matter how safe I'm being. You use, I use this. I bought this kit a really long time ago um, and this was in the kit. It was like a needle felting kit. Then I bought this fan dancy pen that is very, very sharp. Now I can't, you're probably not gonna be able to see that and I can't tell you, I can't see what I'm showing you, but on a felted, a, a felting needle, there are little barbs. And as you like show, like you put your little piggy on here and as you stab the needle in and out, it felts this yarn together or yarn, not yarn. It felts the fiber together and you know, makes it a little piggy. Before, this pen is so slick. It is, I even have the, uh, 
I even have the instruction booklet and the thing that it came on. This is made by Clover. Uh, single needle felting tool. The cool thing about it, and the only reason I know this, is because after I stabbed myself, I proceeded to break the needle. And then I was like, oh shit. This is my old felting needle. So when I bought this, and it, it came with a bunch of fiber and a needle, this is my old one. It is actually not very sharp anymore. It's rusted, somehow it got rusted. But the other one came, hold on. This thing comes off, there we go. And then this is what the needle looks like out. So when I had the needle, that's all I had before was just the needle. This pen is awesome because it gives you something else to hold on to. I love it, except now I need a new needle because this is super old and for some reason it's a different size. So the, as I, as I just stab myself again, as I, look at me, as I stab myself again, so I'm still stabbing myself. I'm not even freaking needle felting anymore. But for some reason, this needle is too long for this pen. So I'm gonna have to look into that. But I really like this. Not that I needle felt a lot, but this is such a good little tool to have in your arsenal. It takes up very little space in your craft room and you just never know when you're gonna get some fiber and you might wanna felt something. Okay, this next FO, I'm still on FOs, you guys. I told you. I'm, oh, this is gonna take forever. Unconventional, I told you I did this. Some of you have seen it on Instagram. I eco printed. Okay, again, I'm not gonna be able to tell what you see. So, for this, I had no idea what I was doing. I made some project bags that I had. This one didn't really transfer onto the back very well. I used these like rust buckles because I grew up on a farm and we still have like a round silo thing and it's filled with like a bunch of stuff and there's a bucket of old rusted like screws and bolts and stuff and I have just been I mean my mind's been reeling about what I can do with it so this was some of them that was a washer uh let me see the this blue was iris petals Mama Jean let me cut one of her irises and it came out so pretty. Now, outside, ooh, I really like this spot right here. Outside of the rust and, that was a cool leaf, and the rust, that's a bolt. There's another buckle. Outside of the rust and the iris petal, no clue what anything else is. I literally hiked around our 26 acres and pulled leaves that looked cool. I have no idea what anything is. I, I couldn't even tell you like what worked and what didn't. Uh, wow, that one's pretty cool right there. So I really don't know. I will tell you that I researched a bunch of different things. There really wasn't, at least for me, a, a good from start to finish, do this easy eco printing thing. I did a bunch of research and basically just kind of mashed some things together. So what I did for these is I boiled now this was Memorial Day weekend, so I might mess this up. I found a formula where you use alum, which I had, and water, and you boil this for like an hour or 
two hours or something. And there's, there's a formula as to how much alum you put in per the weight of your dry fabric or paper or whatever you're doing. So you boil it for like one to two hours and then I let it set overnight. While that was boiling, I was trucking around the farm and finding my leaves. Then I soaked my leaves in a water and vinegar mixture and I let the leaves soak in that overnight. So then in the morning, I rolled them all up into bundles. Like I, I rolled sticks around them and I did the like mummy thing with, I had some jute rope and yada yada. And then I steamed them in a pot for like two hours. Now, you were supposed to like turn them every half hour. Yeah, I kind of completely forgot to do that. So then they were done Saturday morning. I was so good and waited until Sunday morning to open them. So that's these. It was super fun to try. I'd been, it's been one of those things that I've wanted to do for a long time and now I get to say that I did. So that's pretty cool. My last FO, which some of you might know, I, I usually post a block party picture and I did not. My flamingo flavor. I have to stand up. It is ginormous, you guys. Ginormous. Oh, is that not awesome? It turned out so cool. So this is the flamingo flavor. It is by Suzanne Sommer. This is probably how in my earrings are hooking into it. This is how I wear most of my big, my big shawls with a coat. You can do like old lady style. No offense, I wear the I wear those all the time. But look how big it is. Oh, I love it so much. It is so squishy and soft and awesome, and the brioche is so cool. I actually had to kind of like squish it back together because I didn't want to lose the definition of the brioche. Like that really, I mean, yeah, it was, I, I just laid it out. I didn't pin it or anything. The yarn I used for this, because I'm going to be so good and, and remember, the blue is Malabrigo Makita in the storm colorway and the green is bad amy knits in the jungle colorway they are both singles and they are both 100 percent superwash merino and it is so soft and squishy and i love it so much it was so liberating for it to be off the needles this is an i-cord bind off around the whole thing so I was in like I cord hell <laughs> for a very long time. I actually finished it at the plucky pop up on Saturday. So I had witnesses when I was like, no. and if you can believe it, that's my FOs. Was that like forever or what? Oh my gosh. So on to whips. I don't have nearly as many because I got so many things off. Now, the reason that I really busted a hump to get some things done is because I don't like having that many things um, on the needles. And because of the plucky pop-up, you guys, because of the plucky pop-up, I wanted to get some things off the needles so that I can start new stuff. I am so excited to knit with this plucky. So on to some whips, my exceedingly Vanilla Socks by Amanda Steck. This yarn, you know I have the one done. First off, hello, Roberta from Steel City, Steel City Stitchers, sent me a ball sack. What? She sent me another one. I'll show you in a bit, but I'm using this one. Of course, she knows me oh so, oh, oh so well, my pale ale. This is housing, of course, my yarn. I have one sock done. 
I was here the last time you saw it. Now keep in mind that doesn't look like very much, but I did finish the gusset. The last time you saw it, this was on the heel turn. So that's kind of my, my easy peasy stockinette. Then, I know you guys haven't seen this in a hot minute, but because I'm trying to get stuff done, I worked on my little rug hooking. For those new viewers that did not see this episode, my Aunt Karen went to Nova Scotia and bought me this cute, adorable little rug hook. And I'm making this for her. I have never hooked anything in my life. This is a first. I find myself, I don't even know how to say it. I don't dislike it, it's, it's nice. But I feel like maybe the fabric I chose wasn't great, the yarn I'm choosing isn't great. I, I find myself like, you know, like I, I catch myself like, oh, I gotta not be so tense. You know how like when you first learn how to knit or have watched, some of you might have learned how to so long ago you don't even remember, but I used to teach beginner knitter beginning knitter classes and they would be like this. And I remember being that way. And they're like, how can people say this is relaxing? <laughs> it's like, it'll get better. <laughs> it's like driving a stick, you know? You're all like tense at first. And then as you get going, it's better. Well, that whole thing, no. Like, I'm, I'm yeah, I can't do it for very long. I still haven't decided how I wanna finish it yet. So we'll see. Then my last whip, I have a friend who is having a baby. I really don't think that she watches this, but Taylor, if for some reason you're watching this, shut this off and go away. You can watch another episode. I am making her the Crocodile Stitch Baby Booties, and the designer is Lianca Azule, or Azule, I'm not quite sure how to say it. This pattern was actually from 2012. I have knit it before, excuse me, I knit it. I've crocheted it before. I think I said knitting prior to that. I don't know what, I, it's a crochet pattern. I've crocheted it before. I'm sure you guys have seen them. This is being housed in my beautiful sister bag that I got at YarnCon. I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but this is one of those bags that you can have a million different ways. Like there's a strap and you can tie it and there's like all these things you can do with it. My favorite is the bucket. This actually sits right on my nightstand and I've been doing this at night. That's such a lie, I have, I have not been doing this. I did this last night because I just started it last night. So it doesn't look like much, but you guys will see it. I basically just have the sole done and which can't even see what you're looking at. There's the sole and then I'm just starting the sides. This yarn is the yarn that I used in the sleeves of my Sunset Highway sweater. It is by Deep Dyed Yarn, who used to be known as Luna Bud Knits, which I don't know how long somebody has to be new to not say they used to be known as, because she changed her business name, and it's been a while now. But she's Deep Dyed Yarns, and she's at a lot of our uh, local fiber festivals around here. Like, I've seen her a couple times, usually south. This I got at Yellow Springs. It is bizarre to me. And the reason that it is bizarre to me is because I remember this is this is just wool. There might be a little nylon in it. I, I can't remember, I got rid of the tag, I'm so sorry. But the, the reason that it's bizarre to me is because it feels like there's cashmere in it and there isn't. It is so soft. So I'm excited for Taylor to have those booties. This is my, you know, bedtime, nighttime, whatever, crocheting. This is sort of a funny story. I'm crocheting that on your plain old regular size D boy, boy, boy hook, crochet hooks. The reason that this is a funny story, which I don't know, some of you might not find it humorous, but such as life, I'm not really PC, you know. My sister is a regional manager, I think. She's some sort of manager 
for one of those like buy here, pay here car. She's a higher up manager. Like she travels all over she, like Indiana, Michigan, Ohio. And it's like those car dealerships where you pay by the week, you know? And it's mainly people who come in and pay in cash and whatever. Well, she has to repo cars when they don't make their weekly payment. And she came to my house and she's like, oh, I have something for you. I got it out of a repo. <laughs> I was like, what? Because she does talk about, I mean, she has to go to like some sketchy places and repo cars for people not paying their bills. And like some of her stories, man, these people like hide their cars like under trees and shit. Like, I mean, she goes to some sketchy places to get these cars back. But she's like, oh yeah, we repoed this car. We were going through it and whoever the kid was that was going through it, he's like, what's this? And Christy's like, I opened it. I was like, I have to give that to my sister. <laughs> so if for some reason you're the person whose car got repoed, this is mine now. Is that bad that I say that? But look at that. But look how teeny tiny, look at how, I mean, I have not ever had this many crochet hooks in my life. Okay, next up is enabling. I'm taking the shawl. The whole reason I have a tank top on is because it's a uh, 